Now, from these three arguments, we can conclude there's a spaceless, timeless, immaterial, powerful, moral, personal, intelligent creator. We're not going to get through all these arguments today. We've got to get to the great controversy. But let's just take, say a few words about the first argument, the cosmological argument. And this is the argument that many scientists say points to the big... Now, there are some people in here going, uh, Frank, uh, you know we're Christians here. We don't believe in the Big Bang. You guys don't believe in the Big Bang? I believe in the Big Bang. I just know who banged it. <laughs> the evidence for the Big Bang is indeed quite good. You even have atheistic scientists admitting the universe had a beginning. Stephen Hawking said almost everyone now believes that the universe and time itself had a beginning at the Big Bang. Translation, Hawking is saying that space, matter, and time had a beginning at the Big Bang. What does that mean? That the cause must be outside of space, matter, and time. In other words, and these are my words, not his at this point. He, 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 he comes up with other, an, uh, another explanation, which I think is invalid and spoken about it before. But I'm saying that if space, time, and matter had a beginning, the cause must be spaceless, timeless, and immaterial. Seems to me to make sense anyway. A colleague uh, of his, well, a cosmologist who teaches at Tufts University, Alexander Vilenkin, put it this way. With the proof now in place, cosmologists can no longer hide behind the possibility of a past eternal universe. There is now no escape. They have to face the problem of a cosmic beginning. Now, this guy is an atheist as well, and he thinks there are multiple universes out there. There's no evidence for multiple universes. But even this guy, Valenkin, says even if there are other universes out there, all the universes together require an absolute beginning. So you don't get away from the need for an absolute beginner. In my mind, anyway, you don't. And that beginner must be spaceless, timeless, and immaterial, and awfully powerful to create the universe out of nothing. Not only does the beginning, or does science point back to a beginning, some scientists are even saying it points back to the Bible. You see this guy right here? This is, uh, this is uh, Robert Jastrow. He was founder of the Goddard Institute for Space Studies at NASA. Uh, in 1978, he wrote a book called God and the Astronomers. And on page one of the book, he says, I'm an agnostic on religious matters. What does that mean? He's, he says, I don't know whether God exists or not. But then on page 14, after going through some of the evidence that the universe had a beginning, here's what, and all the evidence, by the way, is in our book. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. I don't have time to tell you what the evidence is. But he's saying, Jastrow's saying, that in light of this evidence, this is very consistent with Genesis. Here's what he says. The astronomical evidence leads to a biblical view of the origin of the world. The essential element in the astronomical and biblical accounts of Genesis is the same. Later on in an interview, Jastrow said this, and I quote, that there are what anyone, what I or anyone would call supernatural forces at work is now, I think, a scientifically proven fact. Wait, wait, wait. Why would an agnostic astronomer say supernatural forces are at work? Why couldn't nature have created the universe? Because there was no nature. There was no space, no matter, no time. Nature was created. Nature was the effect. It can't be the cause. I was at University of Michigan about a year ago. And during the Q&A, one atheist stood up after I went through some of the evidence here and said, Frank, I think this is a God of the gaps argument. What's a God of the gaps argument? That's when you don't have a natural explanation for something. You plug God in as God did it. And later on, you find there is a natural explanation. And you look stupid for plugging God in the gap of your knowledge. I said, John, this is not a God of the gaps argument. He said, I think it is. He said, if you give science enough time, we'll one day find a natural cause for the universe. I said, John, you will never find a natural cause for all of nature. By definition... Something must be beyond nature to create nature. And that's what the word super means. It means beyond nature. If all nature came into existence, you can't have a nature cause that existed prior to it. It's got to be something beyond nature. I said, John, you'll never find a natural cause for all of nature. To say otherwise would be like me saying, if you give me enough time, one day I'll figure out that I gave birth to my mother. 
It won't happen. Now, it wasn't just Jastro who said this kind of thing. Every one of the next three quotes I'm going to put up here are from physicists who won Nobel Prizes in physics for discovering evidence that the universe had a beginning.